I dropped out of one of the top law schools in Canada three months before graduating. And it was by far one of the best decisions of my entire life. I went from working 70 hours a week, being constantly stressed out, taking no meaning out of my work, to building to over $600,000 in a single month in just eight months with e-commerce. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you this very little known secret that allowed me to have the courage to go all in. But before we get into any of that, let's discuss how my story came to be so you have some background. So I grew up in a tiny town in Canada called St. Thomas, Ontario. The population is about 30,000. I grew up there my entire life. Both of my parents were born there, they worked there. And growing up, we were very middle class. It's not like we were struggling to put food on the table, but we didn't go for any family vacations, lived in a very average neighborhood. It didn't have a whole lot of money. So my life was very normal. Now the one thing that was different about me was I played hockey ever since the age of two. The reason that they put me in hockey was I guess I had so much energy Energy as a kid, I was running around the house like a maniac 24 hours a day. In my first year, I actually won the best skater award, but it wasn't necessarily because I was doing everything well. It was because I would race around the ice and the instructors couldn't catch me. Ended up going into a hockey career where I spent the majority of the next 20 years of my life. So I ended up making it to the top junior league in Canada, which is called the Ontario Hockey League, where I was drafted as a first round pick. And I ended up playing three years in the OHL. Some of my teammates are some of the best hockey players in the world today. So I've played with Connor McDavid, Bo Horvat, but three years into my OHL career, concussions put a bad into my career. So if you know anything about concussions, the first one might not be that bad, but every time you get a concussion, it's progressively worse and the recovery takes longer and longer. So I had about four or five concussions. And by the fifth one, I was locked in a dark room for like two months straight. I couldn't look at a screen on my cell phone. I couldn't look at a TV. And you just have a constant ringing in your ears and a constant headache. So I said, you know what, let's call it quits and let's just go to university and go down the normal path. I never really thought about what I wanted to do. So I always just told myself, I want to be a doctor, but there wasn't any any really thought behind that. It just sounded cool. It sounded like something that made a lot of money. So I went in my first year of university to biology, but I absolutely hated it. So I wasn't trying at all. I was getting terrible grades. I failed chemistry. I think my average was like 62% my first year of university. I was drinking like four or five nights a week, going to the bar every night. And overall, that was probably the worst year of my life where I didn't have anything going from my whole identity. My entire life was focused around being a hockey player. That's what I was. And then all of a sudden, just like that, hockey player was gone. This was really like a low point in my life for me. And I remember just by chance, I saw an Instagram ad for a book called Who Says You Can't You Do by Daniel Chidiak. And that was the first self-help content I ever read. And I think that book, when I look back, really stands out as a transformational event in my life. That book led to more self-help stuff. It led to me listening to Andy Forsella's podcast, The MFCO Project, which introduced me to Ed Milette, which introduced me to Tim Ferriss and The 4-Hour Workweek. And I read that book literally like the first week after the school year ended. So I went back into my second year of university with new goals. I wanted to do better in school and I wanted to get into law school because I thought being a lawyer sounded like something that more aligned with my personality. So second year, my average went from like 62% in year one to 92% in year two. Now, usually you have to go to university for four years to get into law school. So after my second year, this school that I was at was a big party school. I had a great second year there, but I thought this party atmosphere does not really align with the person I'm trying to become. So I transferred from that school to a school closer to my hometown called Western University in London, Ontario with higher level academics. So I transferred there in my my third year, again, had a great year academically. I actually applied to law school a year early, ended up getting in. I did very, very well my first two years. The way law school works is law school is three years long, but you get your job right at the beginning of your second year, and then you go work there the summer after year two, and then you go back for year three, finish off your degree, and then go work at the same place that you worked after your second summer. I got a job at the highest paying, most prestigious law firm in Canada called Davies Ward Phillips and Viberg. It looked like I was doing great. My parents were proud of me. I had the job at the best firm, but inside, ever since I started consuming that personal development content, I had this gnawing feeling feeling that I wanted to start a business, but I never knew what to start. I wasn't on Twitter at the time. I wasn't really familiar with people on YouTube. So I didn't really have a way to get started. So I just channeled that motivation, that drive into my school, which led to pretty good results. But then I was looking at the people like three, four years ahead of me. So where I was going to be in three or four years. And I would see that every single one of them were online to like 10 PM every single night. And they would rarely get to take vacations. And while they made $200,000 Canadian per year, they work so much. This was actually the summer during lockdown. So near the end of that summer, we were all working digitally from home. So the firm put on an event for the summer students. They rented out a restaurant in Toronto where we could all go meet. They were gonna send some lawyers from the firm so we could network. And the head of the students at my law firm told all the lawyers at the firm, like 200 of them, the students have this dinner tonight, do not assign them any work. And then I get a text. 
It says, hey, Brooke, I need you to do this thing tonight. By 2 a.m. it needs to be on my desk. I'm like, hey, I'm not sure if you saw, but the students have this event tonight. I'm not available. I'll do it first thing tomorrow morning. And the lawyer wrote back, no, it needs to be done tonight. I think what I did was I told the truth. I said, hey, look, I've had four or five drinks. I'll have it on your desk by 5 a.m. And that was a real wake up call for me that I had no control. I was like this person's slave where they could tell me what to do, when to do it at any hour of the day. So the summer law student term finished in early August. I had that six weeks between my summer law student term finishing and my third and final year of law school beginning. And at the time, I was like $170,000 in debt from law school. So what I did was I asked the law firm, hey guys, I'm excited to come back and work for you after my third year, but I have all this debt. Is there a way that I can just stay on part-time during my third year so I can start paying my student loan back? And they said, no. Then I thought, okay, well, I need to find a way to make money somehow. And in the past, I tried AliExpress dropshipping where you sell low quality products from China and I failed miserably. And then I heard this podcast of this guy who did dropshipping a bit differently. So what he did was he sold expensive, higher priced products online. I gave it a try. I was selling furniture at the time, couches, coffee tables. I ended up losing money on the sales. The suppliers and everything just didn't seem to really working out. So what I did was I asked myself, what can I sell that's like furniture, but it's a little bit different? I ended up deciding on saunas. I was gonna list saunas on the same store. Literally just a few days after I started that, I made my first sale for over $14,000. And things took off very quickly after that. First month, I did over 35,000 in just half of the month. Second month, over 150,000. Third month, over 215,000. And this was in, as I said, my third year of law school. I was already making more from my store than I was going to make as a lawyer after I graduated at the highest paying law firm in Canada. So I was considering my mind dropping out. I spoke to my parents about it. They said, no, you're not dropping out. You're an idiot. You have a job at the best firm. You're going to get your law degree in like a few months. And I said, no, I really want to. And they said, okay, you know what? We'll pay for your tuition. Just pass. I don't care how hard you try. Just go pass. It really had me thinking because while I was having early success, making good money, it was not all sunshine and rainbows. There was numerous, very stressful situations. So for example, one of my payment processors was holding a huge sum of money. So I think they were holding like $25, $30,000. Back then that was a ton of money. I couldn't pay my suppliers for orders. I had to call them and call them to try and get that money back. I eventually got unlocked, but it was extremely stressful. And while I was doing well financially, it was taking a toll on me. I was working like 18 hours a day. I had never managed people before. I had never managed teams before. What I was thinking to myself was like, I finally have this thing. This is what I've dreamed of my whole life. I've always wanted to start a business. I finally have a business that's doing well. I need to go all in. I know myself and I knew that if I graduated with this law degree, that I would always have a backdoor whenever I wanted. And I knew that that wouldn't be good for me. So even though my parents were paying my tuition, I just made the decision to to just drop out. I said, I'm dropping out and I'm moving out of my own to Toronto. And essentially what this did was it made me go all in. I had no choice but to succeed. So I had no degree. I had $170,000 in debt. I had no job. The only thing I had was this e-commerce store that I had to make work. And that's exactly what I did. Because just a few months after that, my store is doing over $600,000 in a month. In the first year, we did four or five million. Six or seven months after I dropped out, I moved full time to Dubai. I've been in business now for two and three quarters years, then over $15 million online. And most people think that all this would have started when I started my first business and I made my first sale. But really to me, this goes back to that first personal development book. Not only did I have all this mental groundwork, I was in the right place at the right time. I had a great business model. And I don't want to say lucky because I think luck is a function of how many times you do something. I tried 15 low ticket stores, I tried the furniture store, and then I finally found my winning product. So it wasn't like just the first thing I did work. So now today, I live full time in Dubai, have a portfolio of online businesses and e-commerce software education. They do over a million dollars per month. I live the life of my dreams every day. But it all started by taking that first step by going all in on myself. Just trust your gut. Because I think if you really sit with yourself and you learn to listen to that gut feeling inside, that's the number one thing you should use to guide yourself. What you know internally to be right for you. So that's my story. Office job as a lawyer, 80 hours a week, miserable to making millions and millions of dollars every year with online businesses. I don't tell you the financial aspects of this to brag. I'm telling you this because I want you to know that I was in your exact shoes not so long ago. And I truly believe if I can do it, you can do it. That's not to say it's easy. That's not to say it's gonna be smooth. You're gonna have to change as a person. You're gonna have to forge a new identity. You are capable of it if you decide to and if you go all in. So maybe you're working a nine to five where you hate the hours or you hate your boss, or maybe you're in a college dorm room wondering why you're taking these random classes that don't benefit your life. Or maybe you're stuck partying with a friend group that you don't really feel is best for you. Or maybe you just want a nicer life for yourself. So no matter what it is you want, you need to take step one, but you need to make that decision. No one's coming to save you. So I hope this video gives you the push over the edge that you've been looking for to finally take that first
first step and to take action on your goals. And if you want to learn more about the method that I use to go from zero to over $6 million on my first store and how I've helped thousands of students make millions and millions of dollars online, then click the link in the description. You can check out my free training and see if it's for you. Thanks for watching so far. Hit subscribe on my channel so you can check out the next video. And if you want to keep up more with my day-to-day -day life, follow me on Instagram at Ecom with Brooke. And if you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to get back to every single one of you. That's all for this video today, guys. Cheers.